Hey everybody, this is going to be a video introducing mutual recursion. So far, we've seen recursive data definitions that have references to themselves. Mutual recursion refers to a group of definitions that have references to each other. Let's start with an example. Let's say we have a person structure that has a string and a list of person, representing the name and the children that this person has and a list of person, which is one of empty or cons person list of person. Notice how the person structure refers to the recursive list of person definition, and the list of person definition refers to both itself, list of person, and the person structure. Let's see some examples. We've defined Steve to be a person structure with the string Steve and no children, so empty. We've defined Tanya to be the person structure with the string Tanya and a list with two persons. We've defined Lalo to be a person structure with the string Lalo with a list of a single person structure that has a list of two person structures. How do we write functions for this type of data? Let's start with a template. Notice how we can write a template based on the data. Let's start with writing a template for a person. As always, we start with a signature. And as with other structure templates, we use the accessor functions to pull out the data from the structure. The person name accessor returns a string, but the person children accessor returns a list of person, which is more complex and needs to be processed accordingly. Let's create a template for a list of person. As always, we start with the signature. According to the data definition for a list of person, we have two cases to handle, either empty or cons, so we can use a cond. We know that we can pull out the first and the rest of the list of person in the cons case, and we know that the rest returns a list of person, so we process it accordingly. However, notice that pulling out the first of a list of person will return a person, which is also complex and has a template to deal with it. So we pass the first of a list of person to the template process person. And finally, returning to our unfinished process person template, we can call the finished process LOP template on the list of person returned by the person children accessor. And our templates are complete. Notice how the process person template refers to the process LOP template like the person data definition refers to the list of person, and the process LOP template refers to the process person and process LOP template, like the list of person data definition refers to a person and a list of person. Now that we have finished our templates, let's use them to define a function called any name equal huh that, given a string and a person, determines if that person or any of their children has that string as a name. We have followed the design recipe and have the signature, purpose statement, and examples. Let's copy and paste the person template and change the name. Notice that this function has to take an extra argument, representing the name. Notice also that we need a function to deal with a list of person. Let's call it any name equal huh list. This function takes a string representing the name and a list of person and returns a boolean. Let's copy and paste the list of person template and change the name. Notice that this function has to take an extra argument. And notice that when calling any name equal huh, we pass this extra argument. And we also include it in the call to any name equal huh list. Let's first consider the any name equal huh function. It has a call to the function any name equal huh list, which, according to the signature and purpose, should return true if any of the current person's children has the given name. However, the given person could have the name as well. Let's use string equal huh to compare for equality. Now, this equality will return a boolean, so we have two booleans, and according to our examples, we want to return true if any of these booleans happen to be true. So we can combine these two booleans using OR. And we're almost done completing this function. To complete this definition, we must complete the definition of any name equal huh list and ensure that it returns true if any of the persons in the list of person has the given name. For the empty case, 
If the list of person is empty, we know that there is no person with the given name, so we can safely return false. In the cons case, notice that any name equal huh is called on the first person in the list of person. According to the signature of any name equal huh, this returns a boolean determining whether or not the person or its children has the given name. Name equal ha huh list also returns a boolean which determines whether or not the rest of the list of person has a person with the given name. We wish to return true if either of these booleans are true. Thus, we can combine them with or. And our tests pass. With mutually recursive data, it is very important to have an explicit template that follows the data definitions closely. This makes writing functions with this data much easier. I hope this video helped, and until next time.